to Today with Marilyn and Sarah. I'm so excited that you are watching, and I want to just share a testimony. This is from a watcher, and I think it will really encourage you. Last November, I asked for prayer for myself and children to find jobs. We all were hired and doing very well. Thank you for your prayers. We like to hear from you, and we like to pray for you. And I want to thank all of you partners for making it possible for us to reach a great part of the world with the gospel. Thank you for being a blessing. And Sarah, who is our guest? We have a wonderful guest today. But Mom, I know there are individuals watching who are struggling with emotional issues. Yes. You might be watching and you have some fear. Fear just seems to control and dominate you. You might be watching and you have some health concerns, just working through a diagnosis from a doctor. And we want to pray for you. We know that God answers prayer. And just like this lady who called and said, pray for me, my kids, that we get a job, God has answers for you. And I always encourage myself with this. God has more answers than I have questions. God has more solutions than I have problems. God has more provision than I have needs. I just want to encourage you that God is abundant and has supernatural resources, solutions, provision, everything you need, God has that. And we love to pray for you. So hop on the phone, get on the website. And we have a special guest today whom I love dearly. He's an amazing man. His name is Robert Hodgkin. And he has written a powerful book about winning the battle for your mind, will, and emotions. Have you ever struggled with, like I said, fear or worry, anxiety, panic, depression, any kind of negative thought patterns, any kind of emotional issues in making poor decisions, condemnation? Oh my goodness, I think I maybe hit a couple of hot spots for you. Well, watch this interview now. We're so thrilled that you get to join us, that we get to join Robert Hodgkin today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank it's you. It's wonderful you, to Robert. be here. Thank you so We're much for having me. thrilled to have you. Um, not everybody in our audience knows like who's Robert Hodgkin, sure. right? So can you give us a quick little bio and then we'll jump into a really cool book, Winning the Battle for Your Mind, Will, and Emotions. Yeah, sure. Um, um, my name is Robert Hodgkin. I have served as one of the core leaders of Patricia King Ministries for years and also serve as the leader of Men on the Front Lines. And we're uh, working to empower men uh, through Christ around the world. Nice. Yeah. So where are you born and raised? I was born in Boston, but was mostly raised in Cleveland and have lived all over. And how'd you do the Jesus thing? Where'd you come to Jesus? I got saved. Um, I always get choked up when I tell this. I was a mocker and persecutor of Christians for most of my life. I got saved splitting wood outside a cabin in Montana when the Lord showed up and told me, I refuse not to love you. Wow. I had an incredible encounter with the God I had made fun of almost mm. my entire life. Wow. Yeah. How old were you? I was almost 39. I was, uh, yeah, just about coming up on my 39th birthday. Wow. Yeah. Did you come from any kind of Christian background, parents, or anything like that? Not really. I mean, in the sense that we'd go to church. We'd go to, like, uh, I think it was Presbyterian or Protestant church for Christmas and Easter. Um, and I think we embraced overall Judeo-Christian values. Um, but I didn't really grow up um, in a born-again Christian family. Yeah. So then Jesus shows up. You're splitting wood in Montana. Yeah. And uh, what, like, how did that kind of upend you? Well, I was going through a very challenging time in my life and was very frustrated and sort of come to the end of myself. And I'm sure all your viewers can relate. All, all of our stories with Jesus is the same. Ultimately, we realize he's real and we realize he loves us and we say yes to him. So I had had a lot of, uh, I had been involved in a lot of things, searching for something greater than myself for years, but in all the wrong places and all the wrong ways. 
So when God showed up and told me he refused not to love me, it was the first time in my entire life I felt completely loved, completely accepted, and completely at peace. Wow. Yeah. Oof. And I, I brought everything before him in this conversation, heart-to-heart conversation. Everything I thought should have disqualified me. And there was a lot. Uh, There's a lot that should have disqualified me. And every single thing I brought up to him, he said, I refuse not to love you. Yeah. And I was just bathed in his love and acceptance. And um, I had another encounter with him the next day. And, that, and that's when I said, Lord, if you're as real as you seem yesterday and you're as real as you seem right now, I don't want to do this by myself anymore. Wow. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. And he came flooding into me. And nothing's been the same for 15 years. Whew. Yeah, he's amazing. And you share that in your book? I when don't know that. I'd share other encounters I've had with them in this book, but I don't share that initial one. That encounter is in a book I wrote called um, Divine Union. So, but in this, you talk about winning the battle yeah. for your mind, which is what happened to you. That's right. For your will and your emotions. This is a hot book for you. <laughs> so you need to call in today. And of course, you can leave your prayer request. But I like books. And I think books are secret weapons. You can give people flowers, they will, if you give them candy, make them fat, give them a book and change their lives. So call us with your prayer request and get winning the battle for your mind, you know, your will, oh my, and your emotions. Hey, all of us deal with this, right? So all of you need this book. The other thing I'd say, you might be watching right now and you don't know the genuine love of God. You heard Robert talk about, you know, I refuse to stop loving you, God telling Robert that. And you might be watching right now and struggling with that reality in your life. We would love to pray for you. Hop on the phone, get on the website. We know that God wants to express genuine love to you um, for you to receive that. Um, God created us because God is love. That's it. God needs to, by identity, love. That's right. <laughs> Can't help but love because that's yeah. who God is. His plan has always been to have a people in the earth who'd be in relationship with him that he could pour out his love upon. And you're one of those people. He wants mm -hmm. to pour out his love upon you. Mm -hmm. Totally that's true. That's cool. <laughs> but sometimes I think we struggle on that in our thoughts. Because yep. we, like, like you said, you know, I had a lot of reasons why God shouldn't love me, mm -hmm. right? And, and and our emotions, I'm not worthy, That's you know, right. all this stuff. Or or sometimes we think, hey, I'm better than that. I, I earned it. Yep. So how does your book speak to some of those challenges? Well, everything ultimately is a battle for our mind, will, and emotions. Everything is a battle for the soul because the soul is where we decide. The soul is the place of volition, which is a fancy word meaning it's where we make our decisions. It's where we decide whether or not God is real, whether or not his word is true. And the enemy is always after our soul realm. He always wants us to get to choose to not agree with God's love for us. And then even once we do know his love, even though we know we're loved and accepted, he wants us to doubt that his word is for us. The enemy will always highlight temporary circumstances to get us to doubt eternal truth. And that is ultimately the battle for our mind. Say, that again. Yes. say yes. that again. Say that again. But slow down. Okay, yes. sorry. Slow down. Please say that. The enemy always highlights, since the garden, the enemy will highlight a temporary circumstance to get us to doubt eternal truth. It's how he got us to fall away in the garden. He always makes us feel like God is withholding something from us. Did God really say? Is his word really true? Is his word really for me? Will that promise really come forth for me? Of course it's happening for Marilyn and Sarah. They're amazing, but what about me? It has, I haven't seen it yet. And he'll always highlight the yet. He'll highlight past problems, temporary difficulties and future fears. So we think that's our portion as opposed to the eternal truth. And that's the battle for the soul realm. I want to encourage you. you. Some of you watching right now, you're having a really difficult temporary circumstances. Some of you have had a bank foreclose on you. Some of you are really struggling in not just finances, you're having some emotional relationship issues and they're temporary circumstances. And we want to pray for you on those. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you that God will bring you through but also grab your copy, Winning the Battle for Your Mind, Will, and Emotions, because that's part of the challenge, yeah. really part of the challenge, not just the circumstances. That's right. It's what we do with them in our thoughts, our mind, will, emotions. So how did you kind of work your way into seeing some of these truths? I went through a battle that lasted for over a decade. 
Um, it was mysterious health challenges that were debilitating um, to where I'm 6'3 and 185 pounds. I had withered away to about 145 pounds and was so weak I couldn't even stand up in the shower. Um, and I'd worked with doctors all over the world. I'd had favor with some uh, very influential people and world leaders that I'd prophesied over, and they were concerned about me, so they were sending me to their doctors. No doctor could figure it out. And so I went through this process, and I had a series of encounters with God where he would come and mentor me and show me where I'd given into because of, you know, the Apostle Paul talks about light and momentary afflictions. Right. The key there is so often they don't feel light and they don't seem momentary. Mine was over a decade long, but throughout those years, God would encourage me, he'd teach me that it really is the battle for the mind, will, and emotions, and encourage me in how to agree with eternal truth in the midst of temporary circumstances, and deal with self-pity, with fear, with doubt, with all the stuff that comes up, and help me see that because we have a battle in our life, it doesn't mean we're a victim. It means we are actually victors that get to take territory. And he taught me about what it is to be a victor in the midst of challenges and how to see the victory manifest. We're never contending for something we hope to have one day. We're contending for a greater manifestation of what we know is ours. And when we win the battle, we know it's ours, and then we can contend for a greater manifestation of what is ours. Hmm. I love that. And I believe all of us need to contend, don't you? I mean, there are new things in your life every day. So you can't say, well, I've won every battle. But winning the battle in your mind, in your will, surrendering your will, and the emotional thing, that's a big deal. You know, what you feel. And so I believe every one of you need this book with all my heart because I have to deal with my mind, I have to deal with my will, I have to deal with my emotions, and I'm in my 80s. But I have learned how to win, and you can too. And also, I encourage you not just hop on the phone and grab your copy, but also I encourage you to leave a prayer request with us because we love to pray for you. And, you know, we're going to come back in just a little minute here, but I think sometimes, you know, it's some of our thought processes. You know, we find ourselves starting to go down a rabbit trail. Yeah. And pretty soon we're down a dark alley and we've down, gone down the rabbit hole, <laughs> right? And you're not Alice in Wonderland. You're like, this is hell. This is, but you got to think, kind of back up the train. So I just want to encourage you. We're going to talk about that. Um, we're going to take a quick little break here, but we're going to come back and talk about, you know, kind of thinking about that rabbit trail and maybe stopping that yeah. and thinking through, okay, wait a second, and maybe reframing. Um, I think it's really going to help you. Actually, I know it's really going to help you. So put your remote control down because we're going to come right back. All of heaven is available to you right now through the finished work of the cross. But often it doesn't look or feel that way. The reason? There is a battle for our mind, will, and emotions that determines the fullness of God's presence and power that we walk in. For your gift of $40 or more, we will send you Winning the Battle for Your Mind, Will, and Emotions by Robert Hodgkin. I want to see you living in the more of God that you've been crying out for. In it, you will discover how and why the enemy attacks, the divine power God has placed within you, how to walk in that power, and much more. We will also send you Marilyn's autobiography, It's Not Over Until You Win, her Mindset for Miracles CD teaching set, and our Emotional Healing Scripture Card. And for your gift of $100 or more, we will include the Olive Wood Anointing Oil Box. This artfully crafted box contains frankincense, myrrh, and Rose of Sharon. Call or click today for this powerful resource.
I really get excited over things that help me win. I don't want to lose. You know, there's no fun in losing, but there's tons of fun in winning. And winning the battle for your mind, your will, and your emotions, that's really where winning is, isn't it? And we have Robert Hoshkin, and I'm saying it right. You are, yeah. With this special, special book as our guest. So tell us, how can you do kind of the how-to, how you got into this? Yeah, you know, as I was sharing, one of the ways I got into it was a long-term battle that I was in. And the Lord really mentored me, the Holy Spirit, one-on-one -on -one regularly. He met me where I am. And I want to encourage all your viewers, wherever they are in their battle, even if right now they're losing the battle, God's not upset with them. God's not mad at them. He's That's not good. disappointed with them. God's favorite place to meet us is exactly where we are. We simply have to be willing to meet him there. And that's probably the biggest thing I learned when I was losing the battle for my mind, will, and emotions. God was willing to meet me there. I had to come around and meet him there. And when I did, he mentored me in how to win the battle. And really, for all of us, as Christians, I don't think we realize how powerful we are. We have so much power through Christ within us. And in the book, I go into what he taught me about the supernatural power of the mind, the supernatural power of the will, the supernatural power of the emotions. And so many of us are crying out, oh God, we want more, we want more, we want more. One of the things the Lord showed me is that's a theologically inaccurate prayer. We can't have more of him. He's given us everything, every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, everything pertaining to life and godliness. But he still loves the prayer because what it is is this passion of, God, I want to see more of what I know way down deep I have. And he showed me my real, the reason I was losing my battle is because I was frustrated. And I gave in to frustration. I gave in to self-pity because way down deep, I believed the word. But I wasn't seeing the full manifestation of it. And that was frustrating for me. But is instead of doubling down and decreeing and believing eternal truth and stepping into the power I have through relationship with him as a dominion steward in the earth, then from that place, we can impact all of creation by declaring the word, believing the word. The substance of our faith is so much more real and more powerful than we think of. You know, right now I have on a linen jacket, yeah. and you see it because of the substance of linen. The substance of our faith is more real than this jacket. Hebrews 11.3 says the invisible things are more right. real and actually form the visible. So when we learn how to unlock the supernatural power of our mind, our will, our emotions, our words, and I go into it in, every, in different chapters in the book, but I also give everybody the battle keys he gave me so that it's not only revelation that makes us go, oh, I didn't realize how powerful I was. It's ways to apply that revelation practically in our life. You put the key in the book. Every single chapter has battle keys so that it can be a, the revelation that he wow. gave me that I share, you can apply to your life. Mm -hmm. So how many chapters? I think there's eight chapters. Eight chapters, yeah. eight keys. You no, know, there's multiple keys. Every right. chapter has three or four keys at the end of it. So easy ways to apply the revelation so they can be living mm -hmm. in the supernatural power of their mind the supernatural power of their will, the supernatural power of their emotions and words. This is a how-to book. It is a how, very much a how-to book. And so I think all of us like how-to. Don't just tell me I should. Give me the how-to. So you need to call in, and of course you can leave your prayer requests. We don't counsel, but we do pray. And get several books. I think books are so important. I'm always reading books, always, because I want to always win, and I believe God wants you to win. So be sure you call in and get the books. Robert, one of the things that I mentioned is sometimes our, our thoughts go down like a rabbit yes. trail, right? Yeah. And they kind of just start to deviate. Not, And we don't oftentimes catch it until like, woo! That's right. We're in way, like everything is a quagmire. Yeah. Can you help us on, on, on some of those thoughts and Absolutely. thought management, maybe? It's the same. It's thoughts and emotions are the same way. Is... Um, the, the first thing is, again, I want to reiterate, even if you catch it way down the rabbit hole, it's still good that you caught it. Yeah. Holy Spirit, when he highlights it to us, it's never to bring shame or condemnation. It's so that we can shift. The blood of Jesus works. We apply the blood. We repent for fear, for doubt, for self-pity, for, for anger, for any of the, 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 the wicked emotions 
or thoughts that drag us down. But scripture tells us to bring every thought captive and into alignment with the truth in Christ Jesus. And sometimes we simply need to be reminded that we can do that. The first realm we steward, since day six, God's plan has been to have a people in the earth in relationship with him, and we would operate as his representatives in the earth, as his dominion stewards. The first realm we have to steward to be effective in that is ourself, and that's our thoughts, it's our words, it's our emotions, and so... Like the Apostle Paul said, one of the things that we need to do is focus on and set our mind upon the things that are good, that are pure, that are true. When we catch ourselves focusing on negative things, um, fear-filled things, doubt-filled things, we need to be aware that we can stop that. And that, and, and the Lord mentored me in how to do it. I show in the book how to do it. And it really is as simple. And the, the keys of how to apply it is to replace one with the other. I, I mean, when the Apostle Paul wrote that about focus on what is good and pure and true, he was in prison. He was in prison for the preaching of the gospel. He did not give place to, this isn't fair, what did I do to deserve this? He simply focused on what is good and pure and true. And when he was in prison, he wrote about rejoicing, he wrote about faith, he he wrote about all those things, and he was able to set his mind on those things, and he had great impact because of it. He didn't waste his time. Right, right. (laughs) He wrote books. Yeah. So I think when he got in prison, devil, you really lost big time. That's it. Because he wrote all these wonderful epistles. And we would love to hear from you today because who doesn't have challenges in their thinking? Who doesn't have challenges with their will? Sometimes I get so mad at people, I'd like to slap them, you know? And I'm not gonna slap people. That would be horrible. And sometimes people hurt you. And you can really focus on that hurt and meditate on it. Let's win over it. Get the book. Get books. And call us for prayer. The other thing, too, I think one of the things I've I've noticed and read in your book is the power of the word. And like you just said, replacement, right? That's right. So one of the things, and Holy Spirit's been dealing with me, I just was looking at this the last couple days, is um, Colossians 3, 2, set your mind on things above. Right and not on things of the earth. Do you have some suggestions on how we can do that? Number one is what you've already suggested. It's be in the word. It's important that we renew our mind through the word so that we know the truth. And like we talked about in the first segment, the enemy's always going to focus us on temporary circumstances because he wants us to think that's our portion. He wants us to think God is withholding something from us. That was the lie in the garden. If you eat this thing God is withholding from you, you'll be just like him. Mm -hmm. Well, the truth is they and we were already made in God's image. We were already like him. But if we We start to think, no, God's keeping my healing from me. No, he gave it to you at the cross. You haven't seen the full manifestation yet. So we get in the word and the Lord mentored me and I go into detail in the book on how to take authority over my thoughts, over my emotions, over my choices and over my words. When I was sick, I used to say, you know, um, I, I, my immune system's not working. My liver's shutting down. And the Lord told me, never deny facts. But facts are temporary and they change, always deal from eternal truth. So my confession would become, I'm overcoming an attack on my liver. My immune system is being strengthened. And somebody could say, what's the difference? The difference is massive. The difference is us realizing the power we have through agreeing with eternal truth and the substance of our faith helping to manifest it. Now, God blessed me with a long battle. And the great thing about a long battle is you get lots more fruit and spoils. I, I would, I at first thought... Say that the, again. The, the great thing, when, when God blesses us with a battle bigger and longer than we expected, it's because we're going to get blessed with more fruit and spoils oh, than we ever anticipated. I love that. That doesn't mean it's easy. And for all of your viewers who are going through something real, my heart goes out to you. But I want to encourage you that there is ultimately a purpose for this. I think of Joseph when he said to his brothers, what the enemy meant for harm, what was meant for harm, God turned to the good. And in the, in the book, I give lots of testimonies about what God showed me at my lowest, most discouraged moments of what was still being accomplished in the earth through even my tiny bit of faith at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So powerful. I agree. And I really want you to call us and just let us pray with you. You know, quickie prayers. There's nothing wrong with quickie prayers. But also, get the book. Because you get inspired and then you think, well, what was it about? Oh, that, I really like that. But the book will keep you inspired. 
And that's what I love about books. It's not a waste of time. So I believe today God is giving you some wonderful keys to be miraculous in your life, a miracle life. All of heaven is available to you right now through the finished work of the cross. But often it doesn't look or feel that way. The reason, there is a battle for our mind, will, and emotions that determines the fullness of God's presence and power that we walk in. For your gift of $40 or more, we will send you Winning the Battle for Your Mind, Will, and Emotions by Robert Hodgkin. I want to see you living in the more of God that you've been crying out for. In it, you will discover how and why the enemy attacks, the divine power God has placed within you, how to walk in that power, and much more. We will also send you Marilyn's autobiography, It's Not Over Until You Win, her Mindset for Miracles CD teaching set, and our Emotional Healing Scripture card. And for your gift of $100 or more, we will include the Olive Wood Anointing Oil Box. This artfully crafted box contains frankincense, myrrh, and Rose of Sharon. Call or click today for this powerful resource. Isn't God something else? You know, you say, well, I don't know. I want you to know. And I believe today, as we get into prayer, you're going to see that God is something else, and so are you. So would you lead us in prayer today? I would love to. Yeah, I want to remind each and every one of you how powerful you are in Christ. And right now I speak encouragement to your heart. I know many of you are going through challenging situations right now, but I declare over you what the Word says, that today is a day you will take courage, that you will grab hold of the hem of Jesus' garment, take courage, and see victory made manifest in your life. I release to you a great grace to lay hold of eternal truth, to stand on it, believe it, and, and declare it and send it forth in Jesus' name to see victory made manifest in your life. I'm going to agree too. I'm going to just stretch my hand out and pray for you as well. I rebuke the enemy that would come in with lies and yes. distortion and deception, accusation, condemnation. Enemy, I command you to stop. Be silent. Yes. You will not come and harass these individuals in Jesus' name. Jesus came to set the captives free and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So in Jesus' name, you walk in complete freedom. I just want to encourage you today that when Jesus lives big in your heart and Jesus, you've invited Jesus to come and live in your life, be your Lord and Savior, you're not designed to be the victim. You're designed to be the victor. You're not designed to walk in condemnation and accusation. You're designed to walk in genuine love that your Father loves you deeply, very, very much.